Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Robert Johnson. Good afternoon, and uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, however much uh, we've accomplished in a year, it still feels like we're falling behind. The velocity of change in the world right now is extraordinary, and the, uh, the pressures on all of us to maintain our resolve and to continue moving forward continue to increase. The progress, which you can see with the written materials related to the development of the organization and grants and task forces, convenings like this in future and our academic partnerships, most recently with London School of Economics and uh, before that with Oxford University, uh, are really not going to be the focus of my talk today. I think uh, what's more interesting is that the introduction of INET into the world conversation on politics and economics appears to be, how would I say, engaging change in ways that you can see, such as Ricardo Caballero's paper called Macroeconomics After the Time of Crisis to deal with the pretense of knowledge, where he speaks about how we're too far from the absolute truth to be specialized and to make the kind of confident claims that emerge from some sort of core that really is a local maximum rather than a global maximum. And he goes on to say that on the policy front, this confused precision creates the illusion that a minor adjustment in standard policy framework will prevent future crisis. And by doing so, it leaves us overly exposed to the new and the unexpected. More recently, the International Monetary Fund has had a conference on change in macroeconomics. And if you read between the lines, at some level, the fierceness with which they have applied their vision or recipes now is being drawn into question, and I think quite appropriately so. Olivier Blanchard led a conference there in early March. A number of our INET board members were participants in organizing and speaking at that conference. And so I, th I believe the, uh, the impetus to reorganization, which is really the, the basis on which we founded this organization, is now showing seeds, showing signs of moving forward, but albeit uh, not quickly enough. In particular, I'll mention Robert Solo's uh, fine presentation at the time of uh, this, or at this IMF conference on fiscal policy and on the disharmony that he sees in the attempt to bring science to the analysis of fiscal policy, where he states at one point in his uh, presentation that those who see low multipliers, in other words, little impact, tend to be those that don't want to see the state there, and those that see high multipliers tend to be those that uh, do want to see the state play a more active role. Uh, I, I was always reminded of Joseph Schumpeter's comment when he asked what were the three things economics was about. And he said, oh, that's easy. Politics, politics, and politics. We're at a time right now where the notion of stability, last, last year at our conference we spoke very often about efficient markets and rational expectations and the flaw in that paradigm, or in each of those paradigms. And uh, we were essentially, uh, what in my terms, addressing the notion of what you might call the illusion of market stability, un of unfettered markets. This year, at this conference, we'll deal with a number of issues, global issues, that bring into question the effectiveness of governance, the effectiveness of our tools. And at some level, we're challenging what you might call the illusion of control. As those of you who have been either in airports, listen to the radio, or watch television today, we have a particularly vivid chapter in our politics unfolding tonight in the United States. And I can quote from uh, one of our panelists, Harold James, wrote a book uh, earlier this year or I guess it was last year probably by now. And uh, in the book, he talks about in the aftermath of a banking crisis here, which looked quite similar to a 1931 banking crisis in Europe. And he says, when a systemic economic crisis erupts, 
there is a possibility that it will lead to the elimination of political institutions that lack legitimacy or cannot accommodate the new stresses and expectations. But more often, political institutions have a different pathology, and instead of fading away, they become maligned, dysfunctional, and aggressive. I uh, look at the situation right now where there is very, very little trust. Trust in unfettered free markets was shattered in 2007 and 8. Trust in government in the aftermath of the bailouts and at this point in time is also uh, in very short supply. But for all of us, I think the most important dimension is whether there should be or whether trust in expertise is warranted. And I would say at the core of the mission of this organization is to make efforts together and to build a community which rebuilds that trust and creates a legitimacy for expertise. Those of you who saw Charles Ferguson's film, Inside Job, understand how, how I say, unfortunate it was to see an economist featured in an Academy Award film this year. But that was a very, very powerful criticism, something that I think we all have to take seriously. I, I believe if we don't take these things seriously, and also if we do not address our fears individually and collectively, we will be what uh, T.S. Eliot referred to as the hollow men. Turning and turning. Whoops. We got the wrong slide. <laughs> I guess I would say that I'm, I'm practicing what George Soros refers to as fallibility. Um, at any rate, let, let me continue. Uh, the, uh, the question of how people work together and how they form a community, how they support each other, I think was most recently illustrated when Roman Friedman was in Europe and talking about his new book with Michael Goldberg, Beyond Mechanical Markets. And we saw many members of the INET community reach out, attend, support, and help to organize some amplification for that book and to fortify the, the very formidable scholarly effort that those two gentlemen made. And I want to just point that out as a, as a bit of a beacon for the kind of things that we could all do for each other and all do for young scholars as we try to adjust, address these uh, formidable challenges and not be viewed by those who T.S. Eliot refers to look down on us as the hollow men and the stuffed men. That is not a role that we want to be associated with uh, in, in years to come. That's not a reputation that we should as aspire to. But it will take courage, and I do believe courage is a social process. I believe it is a collective process as well as an individual sense of determination. At any rate, uh, my uh, panelists have been very patient in sitting here, and so I think uh, we should now turn to them and let me uh, try to replay that, the, the slide uh, that was that was teed up incorrectly and introduce Anatole Koletsky, who will uh, lead the next session. Thank you very much.